Brother Kyle, open us up if you would, sir, with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we thank you for the privilege and honor it is to be in your house. We can ask for it for our understanding as we read and listen to your word. We pray for the right heart, the correct interpretation, that you help us to apply the message to our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for our salvation, for your mercy and your grace, for carrying us through the hard times so that we can rejoice in the good ones. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, First Timothy chapter 6, starting in verse 6. The Bible says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. <clears throat> for we brought nothing into this world. And you'll see that when uh, when Carl Amanda's baby comes in. He don't, he don't come with nothing. He just comes with himself or herself or his girl type thing. Uh, that's it. And that's the way it is. God designed it that way. But we brought nothing into the world. And this is the part where we forget. Right? Uh, you forget that regardless of what your perception is or what your intentions are in life, you're not bringing anything back. You're not wherever you're going. Now, there's two places you can go. Hey, man, there's no such thing as limbo or uh, purgatory, that's just Catholic nonsense, uh, just scare all the people and get their money, amen, and right. so you, you're just certain, and it just says you just don't bring anything in, but when it goes to going out, Paul says it's certain, because you know why he had to add that word certain in that verse, it's because again, people get confused, and if you remember movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's always these people going out and they're grave robbing and so they know that this particular king was buried in there. Uh, sometimes he's there buried with his wives and his concubines. So I'm not sure how good that might have been. Uh, you, I guess you really want to take care of your, your husband if that's how the, what the practice was. But uh, they put all sorts of things like boats and, and jewels and, and gold and with the expectation that this guy would then have this on the afterlife, right? So, you know, maybe he'd go over the River Styx. You know, that's that group he listened to back in the... Um, back in the 70s and 80s and stuff. So they have a boat there and they put the, the, the coins for the for the ferryman to get across. But what happened to all that is as soon as this guy passed away and they mummified him, rolled him up, and then everybody just ransacked the tomb and, uh, you know, got all the money because he didn't bring anything with him. And you're not going to bring anything with you as a Christian. So, you know, it's important to recognize what, what the concept or what the reality of being saved is. And again, there's there's nothing wrong with uh, things per se. Verse 6 is, is godliness with contentment is great gain. However, when you get caught up in the rat race, which the world is, if they call it the rat race, uh, then it's all about things and it's all about prestige and it's all about leverage and my positions. And uh, it's not difficult to get caught up into that. Verse 7 says, again, as a reminder, we brought nothing into the world, in this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be, or let us be there with content. Now, now, so let me help you as you pass. Now, Paul there, he's, uh, he's the apostle to the Gentiles, amen, he's, he's, he's uh, written most of your New Testament. As a Christian, this is where we get most of our doctrine, obviously, in the church. And so he reminds you here, or at least gives you a little bit of insight about what your level of contentment should be. Because we're in America, we're like, well, you know, and then what else? And Paul said, look, having food and raiment, let us, Christians, there would be content with what? Two items there, food and raiment. And so if you do want a blessing, because it's all about that, I know, I mean, I like blessings myself. Well, then let me help you. You get a piece of paper, right? And you go ahead and write that verse out, where with food and, and raiment, there would be content. And then underneath, you just number them, one through whatever. You can start one through 20, because you can get more now, but, you know, because what happens is you start feeling sorry for yourself. Because the things that you already have, which, again, is much more than food and rain. So I want you to see that. I want you to understand so that you don't get down on yourself and you don't get down on life and, uh, man, you got the muddy grub and the poochie lip because, you know, you're staring over at Bob across the street and Bob over there across the street, I mean, where do you get that boat? 
and uh, Bob across the street, every time I turn around, he's putting out another box with a television that he pulled out and another bed set and, and, and Lowe's and, and, and Home Depot. And, uh, you know, let's see, not necessarily rooms to go. Let's go. Ashley's furniture pulls up. And you're like, wow, well, how come Ashley's never come? Mine says goodwill. And so you get your, your, your clothes and stuff. And sadly, you know, as a Christian, you can lose focus. So we come to church and we read Bible and we get reminded and the Lord reminds us. And so here Paul is writing, you know, you would think though, based on what you see in America today, Paul would have definitely had a condo on the South Beach, right? <laughs> Paul would have. He probably had a Corvette or two, right? The way he worked and, you know, like Joel Osteen's or Benny Hinn or Kobe Gott. He'd have two or three planes. But Paul says, uh... And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. So take a little, make a little list. And you sing a song, maybe it's in that that, that song, but I'm not sure. Uh, count your blessings, right? And uh, go ahead and start writing down everything that's in your life uh, as far as material, because those two things are material, right? They're materialistic, right. food and raiment. That's not like because we can get into the joy and the peace and the fruits of the spirit. I'm not talking about that. You need things in the world. I, I believe that. But, but here, here's it. The reason why he only adds those two there identifies those two because what you'll quickly see if you actually go through that exercise, you can do that right now. Think about all the things you have over and above food and rain. And then you can start adding the stuff after you get with this garage and you're done with the garage and you can start going through the different rooms and different things like that because it doesn't say sleep number bed. <laughs> Doesn't even say bed there, right? It says food and raiment. If you're not sure what raiment means, that's clothes. And it didn't say four or five pairs of shoes and ten different whatever and all. It just says raiment, which could be anything that just covers you up. And those guys out on the corner, they have raiment. And you're like, well, don't even, you wouldn't even think that way. Not in America today. Because you're always getting a little cold thing in the mail and it's the cold box and you're looking at this and you're kind of figuring out. And you know you're already in debt. And you know there's no reason why you need a certain something. And, and just uh, be thankful for the fact. And what happens is Christians, they get this whole self-pity thing. And yes, I have things, but they're really not as nice as his things. Or like I got things, but I don't have a whole lot of things. And so you start getting into situations. And then you get a little bitterness popping up. And the root of bitterness just starts getting into your life. And before you know it, now all of a sudden from this happy-go-lucky born-again Christian is telling people about Jesus Christ, you're not coming out of your house no more because you're mad at God, amen? And you're not coming to church no more because you're bitter at other Christians. And now it's like every little thing a Christian does that's out of line, you're pointing their finger and you point to hypocrites and, and, you know, look at you and you think you're all that and whatever. And that's because you Christian, it's very easy to lose sight over the reality of your Christianity. The things that you're looking forward to, I can't stress it enough. I try to try to let you know, man. And then, you know, sometimes it goes in one ear, out the other. Or it's like talking to a wall. My uncle used to always say, you think I'm talking to a wall? Because you kid, you know, you're going like this and he's talking to you. And you're kind of staring off and out of space and just talk. Who do you think I'm talking to a wall? Rich, you listening to what I got to say? And you're like, oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's like, what I say? But, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what you did. So, so we brought nothing into the world, verse 7, and certain we're not going to bring anything out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. And boy, the level of contentment, if you can get to that, uh, that, that, that peace of mind, right? Verse 6 says, but godliness with contentment, that's great gain, which means, boy, you are, you can be head and shoulders. If you really want to be honest about your Christianity, uh, that Bible believer, you as this Bible believer, you know, now, now think about this one again, trying to get too petty, and I won't say everything by name, but, uh, you know, oh, we had a conversation not too long ago, within the last couple of days, actually, with the, with the Christian that were upset over a parking spot. Now, you know, how do you handle that other than I just walk past me? You ain't nothing to talk to me. I ain't getting, you know, what, and, and I say that, and, you know, you can connect the dot where I can go next about pettiness and things like that and being, people being discontent with, 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 with things and positions. And, you know, so, so Christianity, sadly, has gotten to where instead of putting the whole armor of God on and being a soldier and, and pushing through and, you know, sister, with all due respect, 
there's a huge level of masculinity within this Christianity, amen, and it's to be a good soldier, and you got to be tough, and uh, you got to be able to press on, and then sadly, instead of being the soldier, most Christians, you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't, like, come to their church or visit their church and, and, and see that that's an armed camp. You know, and I'm not talking about a militia and all that stuff, so let's not get caught up in that at this moment. And if you'd like, I can talk to you more about it with that. However, uh, you have more of a, like, of a social club thing going on in churches today. I got that. And you got the bongo drums and all that, and I got that. And, you know, you got a lot of food, and I get that. Amen? Uh, however, your Christianity is, is, is all about discipline. They're called disciples. It's called we push off at, at eight, and then everybody's here, and this is the responsibility that we have. And, and you're living in a country that it's like, uh, you know, whatever, we make it or we don't make it. If we do it, we don't do it. And then now all of a sudden it's all, well, you know, church is a thing that we do. Now, that's not being reflected in that Bible, not, not that mentality. Not that perspective like, well, you know, Pastor, when we get around to it, we do it. And that ain't in your book. And again, I'm trying to remind you, if you're not listening, I'll say it yet again. So that every one of us shall give account of himself unto God. Amen? So Amen. there's going to be that day. And I'm not sure what you're pretending that day to be. Or maybe it is you're just thinking that it really ain't going to be like that. And maybe it's because you don't feel like there's a grave need in your life. And certainly God must not. And then sadly, here comes that pesky AB again with all the words in it, and it's talking about very specific things. And Paul's being very specific in that the purpose of him telling you that this godliness, now you know what godliness means, right? Godliness in a nutshell, let me help you, just means doing right. It ain't the true God himself and you're transforming yourself into some God, but what that means is, look, the closer you get to Jesus Christ, and how do you do that? Well, there's levels of repentance involved, and there's there's moves on your part, right? You seek ye out the book of the Lord, you seek his face, and you get closer to him, and then there lies the godliness. And then there's the light, and it's like the things that please God, and you're concerned about that, and you, you make your day like, uh, well, what can I do for you? Speaking of God. And once you put him first in your life, right, there's one God. That's what it says. Yep. And you can very easily, especially again in the United States, say, why are you always kicking the United States all the time? I'm an American. You, you probably wouldn't think that by the way I preach, but, you know, I was accused of being a communist last week. A pinko. It's a pinko. A communist pinko, man. A communist. I'm no communist, man. I'm just not an idolater. Right. And your whole witness are darn right about what they're putting out with this flag and everything like that. But anyway. You're not under the law. But what I'm telling you here is uh, it doesn't take much for a Christian to get sideways. I don't want you to be sideways. I want you to keep moving forward. I want you to, to get closer. And I don't want you to get closer to God. And I want you to get closer to the book. And when you start getting closer to the book and you follow verse 6 again, it says godliness with. The godliness comes first. And then when it comes to the level of contentment, you're able to handle that. Most people can't handle contentment because they're not. They're not content. Now, here's the danger of, of stuff in America, and I'm very happy that you guys have got your house. And, and as long as you got the godliness nailed down, or you're in the process of nailing the godliness part of verse 6 down, then you'll really enjoy that house. Because, you know, it'll be like, glory to God, because the alternative would be, you know, I'm, I don't have a house. And you can really see things the way they should be because you're not owed a house anywhere in the Bible, number one. Now, in my father's house, right, that's John chapter 14, verse 1, are many mansions, and I go to prepare. Now, that's a good thing, so let not your heart be troubled. So part of that level of contentment is knowing that this is all temporary. And I got an email today saying this is the most crucial whatever. Again, I said it's always crucial. Every election, every election is that, and I can part of the Donald Trump team. And if I get that, you're going to call me. <laughs> oh, that'd be kind of cool. I would listen to him. I would listen to him. But I mean, it's just that everybody's all caught up. And I actually saw one guy for the first time, one dude on, on Facebook that actually put a picture of Donald Trump with that rainbow flag and said, we got problems as Christians. I'm like, oh, that could be that. How are you? Because <laughs> I've been called everything but a child of God for, for, for 
disrespecting, I don't know, perversion and stuff. I don't know, just, so if you're not careful, though, as a Christian, man, you can really get caught up. And then when it comes to your new house, and glory to God for it, if you don't have that godliness part, the contentment follows the godliness. If you don't nail down the level of godliness, man, pleasing God and getting close with God and then and getting junk out of your life that God points at, points out rather, then it's going to be real quick because that house, that house is new to you, and within a few months it's going to be like, because hmm. <laughs> hmm. we buy a house every time we're in the house, man, and you know you ain't doing right, and man, you at the moment that God gave you that house, and believe it or not, that you know. Make no mistake, rather. God cuts those deals for you. God is involved, if you, especially if you're seeking his face to make sure that's the right deal. Because you can certainly, when it comes to long-term investments, you can get caught up in a, in a, in a, in a what do you call it, a money pit or whatever. So hopefully, and that's what our expectation was, because leading up to your, your signing, did you sign a piece of paper yet? A lot of papers. Okay. Oh, it's electronic now, right? Because we're afraid to breathe. Oh, you actually hold the pen? They take the pen back? No, nah, they're going to take the pen back. Because, you know, in that weird America, you used to whoop like the Germans, and we used to whoop like the Japanese, man, and go over and only take over the world. And now Americans are afraid to come out of their house and breathe. I, don't know, I tell my kids that at school now, you know, say, hey, what happened? Who? Well, what happened to America? You guys ever, like, watch any movies or watch TV or some kind of documentary? Because I was going to say, do you read? But we all know that. So you ever watch TV, you know, like, you know, documentaries about the United States, World War II and stuff, you used to actually win wars and stuff. You know, why are you afraid to breathe? And you got half the school, they're afraid to come back. Half of them. Which would probably not so much be the kids, but I know where that's coming from. That's from the country. They ain't trusting God for nothing no more. And again, I, I tell them, we used to right. get sick last year. Do you remember that? People just got sick and stayed home and, you know, things happened and, you know that in America, before this uh, Kung Fu, you could have gotten sick and died over your sickness. Amen. And what was that? I'm sorry. And we will, if it's something that we can identify, let's not repeat it, but for the most part, you know, you can still get tuberculosis, and you can still get chicken pox, uh, and you can still do that, and you can do whatever. Oh, I, I was told that you cannot get chicken pox anymore. I don't know, I did. I remember that day. I thought, boy, I'm freaking out. And it was like, hmm, tell me right, mommy, and all that. I was gonna take it, and you know, you gotta take it, you gotta take me as a kid out in public, looking like the leopard man. <laughs> and it's like everybody at the doctor's office is. You know, I remember getting, I remember today, this day rather, it was. I'm in the elevator, and you're trying to be invisible. You know how that works, right? You're invisible, so nobody's <laughs> looking at you. But everybody in the doctor, everybody walking there, looking at. <laughs> Looking at me, man, and you know, every kid in there going, uh, what's up with you? And I'm like, uh, I don't know, what was that? It was the summer of sixth grade. So I was born in the seventh grade. I just moved to Snapper Village, just started meeting friends. And man, I'm walking in that elevator, and in the 15, it seemed like that. Probably, it probably seemed like there were about 80 people in that elevator. Probably two or three, but it felt. And you know, you're just sitting there, and you had cow, you know, back then, I don't know if you guys know what cow mine loves you, but man, so mom is. That and all that. So now I'm looking straight like a mummy or something and trying to be cool because in seventh grade you got a little swag going, probably had a little flippy hair thing. And you know, I'm a kiss t shirt on or whatever, and then you look like Freddy group. Um, and everybody looking at you like turn and then they're <laughs> And so man, and then you know my buddies are like, come on, Martin, let's come outside and I open the window. And you're like, oh man, oh, I'll stay. Oh man, we're good. We'll come back next month, man. You know, and you know, it's like that Kermit the Frog meme you see on Facebook where you're staring there, it's raining, and you're like, oh, it's gonna be fun. But then I was told, oh, we don't have chicken pots anymore, brother, pastor, because we got a vaccine. Now, now, here, let's let's touch that for a second. Like, I know there's like two camps, but I, I, I want to remind you. You don't have to keep falling in line with whatever other people are telling you to do. Your Bible never uses the word to, although there's two testaments, and I get that, and there's heaven or hell, but you're God, the Godhead. How many parts does he have? Three. It's always three. So start there. 
So if it's the, the Democrat or the Republican, and they say that's your only choice, and then the other one says, oh, I'm a libertarian. No, see, there you go, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that Jesus Christ, when he died, and we've said this before, he died on the cross, and for whatever reason, I mean, it was God, he picked that one. Which means there's a there's a right side depending on which way you're facing this thing, and there's a left side. Now the world tells you to choose. Go that route. You either got to be a Republican, you got to be a Democrat, and whatever. And, and this is the side you got to choose. And are you with the? I'm not with any of you, to be honest with you. I'm not with the left, and I'm not with the right. I'm in the middle. Yeah, I would hope you'd say, man, because you would say that then that was Bible, because that's Bible, brother, brother, sister. And this idea that somehow God is for the Republicans and hates the Democrats. That's the same thing that anytime any war goes on, did you know that the Germans went in taking over the world and were convinced God was on their side? And then the Americans are running around and saying, you know, God's on our side. Why are you yoking up with Druids and communists and stuff, you know? No, God is God is gonna get done what needs to be done, and we've gone over, I mean, we kind of beat that Gentile thing to the to the ground, have we? And I was going to continue on with that today because it's just like 400 pages worth of stuff. So you can see that, that what you're doing is way off mark. But I thought, you know what? That's enough of that. I'm getting tired of it. Excuse me. Plus, I'm tired of running around with you. It's just half on line and this and that thing breaks down or whatever. But that level of contentment, going back to that, if you don't have that, then that house in about a month ain't going to be anything to you. And you're going to be like, well, that's a starter house. And we can get a better one later. And you can go buy a car and then in a month or a year you're gonna be like And I wouldn't do all that. I'd be still in debt because of that price. Or that pilot out there is upside down because we just trade it in, why not do this? Why not do that? Put it on the car, why not do this? Do this, do this, and God's looking at you like, man, what happened to the godliness of the beat down? And without the level of godliness, you're not content. And you're always caught up in certain things, and you got this idea, I just make a little kingdom because I'm the king of the castle, and I'll keep doing all this stuff. In the meantime, you're piling up debt, brother, and what happens if God calls you to move? What happens if God calls you to a mission field? What happens if God calls you to do a certain song, and you're not going anywhere as a result of the amount of debt that you have as a Christian? You're not going to be able to do a whole lot of whatever, and then when it comes time for, you know, getting into tithe and offerings and different things like that, Brother, you got to be mind, mindful of uh, of that money. You know, the money that you have, whose is it? God's Lord. Understand that, because a Christian really doesn't have a problem giving it up to AT&T. Because mm -hmm. you have this idea that, you know, i got to have whatever, and you can just go down the list. i got to have it, and you got it. And you know, man, every year you got to have a new one of those. And then that gets old. And then you get a new one of those. But I'm telling you, man, your life will be a whole lot better if you just resign the fact that, number one, this world's not my home. And if you're losing sleep over deals, if you're losing sleep over items and things, that's a problem. And people do that all the time. They lose sleep over, oh, my God, what's going on, and this and that. And if that's the case, that level of contentment in your, in your life, which is why Paul says in verse 6, you know, that's a great thing. That's, that he used the word great on that thing. But you know why he says it like that? Because there's so many that miss that mark. They're not. They're not content. They're discontent with the family. They're discontent with the job. They're discontent with the church. They're discontent. So to me, I understand that the problem is the lack of godliness in your life. And we preach on getting right, get right, repent. Be, repent, therefore, you know, be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's what Jesus Christ says to the church. And yet, you know, we just play the game and we're just going to do whatever we do. In the meantime, there's no contentment. You're not content to have a little church like this. You're not content to have an opportunity to do whatever. You're not content with the fact that, you know, you're not walking everywhere you have to go. Because that can happen. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there are a lot of adults, man, on little pink bicycles riding around. And I'm like, man, what's, uh, what happened there? You know that's stolen, or, or that's his daughter's. <laughs> but, you know, whether it was his DUI or whatever else, you know, and they try to look cool because they got a cell phone, and then they're on the little pink bike because you don't look cool there. You look utterly odd doing that because it's not natural for an old guy like that with a phone and a pink bike. But there they are. And, but by the grace of God, that could be you, man. Real quick.
And God starts pulling plugs on different people's lives, not because he hates you, but because he sees that you're just being a foolish son, and he wants to start, he'll start smacking you around, man. And he'll start shaking your life up real quick. Understand that, and just figure out, look, the best place I can be is in the center of the will of God. That's the safest, best place in the world, man. Glory to God for it. But if you've got this crazy Christianity like so many do, that Christianity is something I do when I can get around to. Man, you're a big boy. You better have responsibility, sister, brother, about what that means. And you better be close to God. And you, you didn't bring up in this world. You ain't bringing up now. And now the key is that there are opportunities for you to, to lay up investments up there. And most Christians aren't connecting that thought. And what it is is they have no idea that there's some bank account type setup in heaven. Yeah. And it's talking about you use terms like a full reward and, and all these different things. And... You know, you just say arbitrarily that in my father's house are many mansions that are going to prepare a place for you, and you don't compare scripture with scripture. And you're not recognizing the fact that that might not be the case for you. Because now you're talking about the book of Revelation when he's telling you to get right and that your nakedness does not appear. And the Bible starts talking about, you know, here, actually, oh, yeah. We go here quite often, but I mean, this is where we're at in the Bible. Go to Revelation chapter 3. Man, if you could just go through Walmart and not drool, that's a good indication, man. Your heart's pretty close to getting right. But if you go through and you're constantly waiting for cold bucks to come in and you're online, you got to keep ordering stuff like that, and my wife's like, well, you. <laughs> well, yeah, I do sometimes. I do buy a pair of shoes right now. But I look, because on Facebook, if you don't know, not Facebook, but uh, eBay, if you don't know, you can push the word S O R T. What does that spell? Sort. And there's a list there. So they're going to give you the, everybody buy this one first. But, you know, you can get around that. And I always hit the cheapest one. And, you know, you can scroll up and down. It might not be the first one because, yeah, they're old in that pair of shoes. But, I mean, you can flip. You can do this with your fingers. That's the way they do it. Um, and, uh, and you can find a piece of pair. So, you know, you can do that. I mean, you need it. You, you know, you, you, you can't buy clothes now. Now. Gotta have on. And I thank God I married a young lady right here that, you know, she's not that Gucci thing. And I gotta have this. And I know guys that get the supersized house because the wife, you know, otherwise the wife would be wandering away and finding the doctor across the street. You know. And I thank God I had a wife that, that she has been right there by my side the whole time. And wherever the Lord led, whatever, as me as the man, because where's the man? And she understood that a long time ago and made that level of commitment. And God bless us her as a result. Um, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. Submission. And boy, you know, you know you're, you're right now you got that little you can tell. I always knew when the kid was going off because I'm looking at him and he's going, this little muscle here, first going on, you tense it. And I tell my buddy, <laughs> you won't swing on this man. All right, look at Revelation chapter 3, look at verse, look at verse 14. And unto the, to the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, these things say, amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of, of the creation. Verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, thou wilt thou art cold or hot. So then because thou art not cold or hot, or neither cold or hot, I'll spew thee out of thy mouth. Because thou sayest, I'm rich. And increase of goods. Now, they're saying that because they are. However, instead of going back into the whole Christianity thing and realizing godliness will contend with this great thing, they're saying that I'm rich with increase of good with these things, or rather, I'm rich in increase of goods because of these things. And God will explain, and Jesus Christ will explain in a second, you ain't. Because you, you're trusting in all these different things. And the sad part about America is that they're so caught up in these things. And so all the Christians, all the Christians that are posting online about Donald Trump has to do with gain. Make America good. It's not make America great, it's make America godly. Or make America righteous. Because righteousness exalts the nation, not gain. Not things, 
not greatness, not, and that's all you ever get is, well, we need more jobs. Does a man need a job? Sure he does. But you're talking to a millionaire, probably a billionaire now, whatever this guy really makes, and he's like, the reason I love America so much is because I'm, I know about the heart of the deal. And you, you, you ever read that Bible when it talks about rich and riches and deceitfulness of riches and things like that, and it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle? Do you ever read that? Yeah. And riches profit not in the day of wrath. And so all these Christians are all flocking around a businessman, and they're like, wow, I can get a bass boat. Make America great. I can get more things. And that's what's going on. And I'm like, well, I thought we had just had a message, and I had thought you graduated, and I had thought you read your Bible to know that godliness with contentment is great gain. And the love of money is the root of all evil, man. And now all of a sudden, they call, Paul starts talking about when piercing them through with many sorrows, and all of a sudden, man, you're in debt and all these different things. Man, the measure of a man ain't how much money he has in the bank, brother and sister. I know you're prince, and you, know, you want that, and you know, what kind of cars you got? You better worry about what kind of heart he has. Because that car gets old, I promise you. you use, that's all your life is, is things, and I got to get this, and you know, little kids that are watching Justin Bieber and all these things, all these little millionaires. And then sadly, guys like uh, you know Robin Williams, who is like the funny guy on all the Disney movies and whatever, and this guy wound up killing himself. Either he OD or hung himself, I forget which. And you have interviews with all these particular movie stars, and they're like, man, you know, I don't know that I've ever been happy a day in my life. But yet everything and everything we see is like we want to pattern ourselves after the, the guy behind the scenes, the, 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 the CEO of Warner, Warner Brothers or, or Sony. They're just pushing all these little individuals for you as a selling point. And then this, this actress starts getting old and she gets wrinkled and then she's going in there and getting these Botox things. And you're like, wow, how come, they, how come ain't nobody getting me any jobs anymore? How come I ain't getting no roles no more? Why you want to be Freddy Krueger? Well, we have to say we need to save on some makeup because he uses it. I don't know what happens when you make it for the bride of Krueger. Says, I know thy works, verse 15, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou were cold or hot, so that because thou art lukewarm, in verse 17, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with good and have needed nothing. And the danger is that you get so caught up in things that now you don't need anything. And the problem with the United States, because it has so many things, you don't need God. The Bible said, my God shall supply your needs according to his what, riches or whatever. Yeah. But if you don't need anything, it says I need enough. Then there's no need for God in America. And so hence there's 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 no real righteousness going on and there's no godliness going on and you're embracing perversion because you're 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 the idleness and fullness of bread, which was the sin of Solomon. And your song says, I'm proud to be in America. And we're like, oh, you can't make a connection with that. That's just a song. Yeah, that's pretty so. Mm -hmm. And then you're playing the Rolling Stones after that. It's so, man. You got to be careful. I get it. I'm an American. Glory to God, man. I didn't say take the flag down. I didn't say I hate Trump. I hate Obama and all that. I didn't, I didn't say that. I pray for him. Well, that's why. And you keep penny pinning and oh my God, what's going to happen? We're going to have church. When whoever gets in the office, we'll be right here. Amen. When Obama was in the office, all you ever heard was, oh my God, oh my God. I, I don't ever remember being, you know, kicked out of church. Now, now, you're getting kicked out of churches here in America. And who's your president? I mean, I don't know this, what's going on. I say, well, that's California. Okay, you, you, I know you keep making excuses. You keep moving the gold, the gold post, man, every time we have a conversation. But, you know, I can give you scripture. And you can't handle sound doctrine, which Paul talks about. There'll be a time when they won't handle sound doctrine. The Ethan themselves teachers. So you just get all these like-minded patriots, and we just all get together with, uh, you know, the mega Christian club. And then when it comes to Bible, nobody's interested in the Bible. We'll just put more memes out. No Bible, man. And I'm telling you, you think that the prosperity, Jesus Christ, man, think about what the, 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 the King of Kings had when he was here. 
And that Bible said he had no place to put his head. And here you are, not only do you have a place to put your head, you got a little, you got a, you got a, you got a comfort. And you got a sleep number, and you can adjust it, and you, know, you got the little squishy stuff, and yeah, keep going. Amen. And you got AC. Yeah. You know, a uh, uh, pastor asked this old saint one time, you know, that uh, was probably in his 80s or 90s, and, and uh, he asked this uh, guy, he said, uh, maybe he was a pastor, he said, uh, Hey, Pastor, you think America will ever see revival again? And you know that old man said? He said, uh, no. And the, the young pastor's like, well, why? why? And kind of burst his little bubble because, you know, we're always going to. Anyway, uh, he said, America has too much. And he was alive during the Depression and stuff like that. So he saw all that. You know, you, you get this crazy idea, like, you see America today, like, that's how everybody lived in America. And you get the propaganda from the communists saying that all the white people live like this, or all the black people live like this, or all the whatever people live like this. And brother, when that depression hit, there ain't no white, black, or whatever. Everybody's eating oatmeal, and everybody's, you know, lard sandwiches. And if you could find a little sugar, man, you were like, uh, whatever. And that's where your chicory, disgusting coffee. Oh, my dad drinks that. So, so, you ever have chicory coffee, man? So, my dad's like the antique guy, and he like, like when I go visit him, he's like, you want a cup of coffee? I'm like, yeah, all right, Dad. And I know it. He pulls out this weird can, and you got you got to go way in the back of the supermarket to find it. it ain't Maxwell House or whatever. And uh, I even got in Maxwell House eighteen something. You know, like Maxwell House has this uh, obscenely expensive coffee. It's the same stuff with a different branding on it. Oh, yeah, for the sucker. So I'm like, oh, my dad will like that, and he's just staring at it because it doesn't have wood chips or bark in it. And so this, this, this chicory is like some kind of root and they didn't have coffee and it's a Louisiana brand or whatever. And so it's like, they didn't have real coffee. So they, they, they uh, cut, maybe that's not the right word to use, but they added, they supplemented the coffee with this chicory bark. It was close to coffee, it wasn't coffee, but it was like, hmm, eat that. What does that taste like? It tastes like a pizza. All right, cut it up, put it in the pot, man, and then we got coffee now. And when my dad gets off, you know, he likes that kind of stuff, but it's uh, acquired taste, man. Well, what? Wait till you, wait, wait till the, you know, the difference between when, and I don't remember exactly when the, when, uh, when the Depression hit, it was like in 19, when? Was it? Like Black Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, Friday, whatever it was. And man, all of a sudden, your all your investment was zero, mm -hmm. and all your money was not worthless. And you know, you ever see these pictures of these kids riding, you know, with the big old wheelbarrow in some of these countries like Venezuela, and it's all full of Venezuelan cash. You got a wheelbarrow full of it, and you're like, wow, he's a millionaire. That's for one one loaf of bread. And I'm not an economic guy. I'm not understanding a lot of these different things, but I do know this. You know, there there the 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 money that you were supposedly uh, circulating, they used to be called like I don't know, I think they're called silver notes, silver certificates. So that meant that that little piece—it's a piece of paper there that you got in your hand. And it used to be called a silver note or silver certificate, which meant if I turn it in, I'm supposed to get that amount of piece of silver back. So here, instead of carrying pockets full of silver, I get it. So I can just use this little tenure here, and then the idea would be it's backed up by something. Right. But the FDR, you know, he's passing stuff, you know. He, He's a socialist, man. That's why he's comfortable hanging out with the communist guy over here, honestly. And so he's now taking and started getting America off the gold standard. And I think it was Nixon, Republican, killed it off. You're not on a gold standard anymore. Your entire currency, whether you get paid or whatever, is on some kind of computer screen. And so, like the the world's record, the Guinness Book for World Record of the of the greatest heist. Because you always watch, you know, Bonnie and Clyde, and they're, ah, where's the barrel game, you know, and, you know, is that the bank's or is that yours? And it's like, it's mine, and he's the old farmer, lets him keep it, then he shoots up the bank and all that. The days of doing a lot of that, that's gone. Now it's a cyber thing, and so the Guinness Book of World Records for, like, the greatest heist is some guy in the room. And he puts, whoop, enter, and then all that money goes away. There's nothing there. If everybody, yeah, matter of fact, if everybody, even for the paper stuff, if everybody went today, everybody went today in Homestead to go to the bank and withdraw your savings, if you have any, I mean, I got a checking account. I don't know about a savings account. 
Um, everybody went in there and said, can I have my money back? They couldn't do that. There's nothing there, folks. I don't know where, you know, what's going on. It used to be, it was gold. As a matter of fact, you know, when I was a little kid, my aunt used to always get me these little silver dollars. The idea was that's a dollar, a silver dollar, a real dollar worth the dollars worth of silver. That was what that was. Now, that silver dollar, if you still kept it, that's probably worth 20 bucks or whatever. And what you have now, when you say, I got a silver dollar, you don't have no silver dollar. If you put that on the side, you realize there's a bunch of whatever underneath there. It's copper or whatever else. They've taken all your valuable metals out of that a long time ago. Matter of fact, even copper. So you got these drunks and drug addicts that are going into these different construction sites and pulling all the copper, copper out of the wire and stealing everything or whatever so they can turn that into pay for their habit. So you think, well, I got a penny. Go ahead, get a penny. Here's your little assignment for today or for Sunday. Go ahead and get a, 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 a you know, some, some metal scissors or whatever. Or I'll tell you what you can do. Just take your penny and go to your local sidewalk and just start doing this. Put that penny in about five seconds. You know what you're going to see? That penny changes color. You know what color? Silver. You're like, oh, it's silver. It's not silver. It's like zinc or aluminum. Your government that everybody's so excited about and all this full of the Jesuits and all that, everybody, every Christian gets excited. Oh, my God, this is so fun. They've been bamboozling you, man. For why do you think they're all in power? Why do you think it's like all these senators? And you know, I, 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 you know, the difference between a guy like Donald Trump is he already had all the money, and he's going in. Well, now you got all these politicians like they started out making two hundred grand a year, but they're leaving after twenty years, and they got ten, fifteen million dollars. Well, they didn't make that from them. From you now, that, that's pretty good money. Two hundred thousand a year type thing. That's good money. They ain't no ten, twenty million. And now they got all these properties and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You can ask yourself, well, what's up with that? On both sides of the fence. Yep. I'm telling you, the only honest guy you got going is this guy right here. Mm -hmm. Well, who's he? He's like, well, Jesus Christ. Yep. Oh, that's right. That's my savior. Uh huh. Keep going. Oh, he wrote a book? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the art of the deal. He got one better than that. It's right there. That came in the Bible. Yeah. 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 And it's like, man, read this book about the Bible. Read this book, and read this book, and read this guy, and read this guy. The Holy Spirit of God wrote one, too. I'll prefer to read that. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Spirit that's inside of you is going to be witness and, and bear record and bear witness to everything. And you're like, wow, this makes sense, this makes sense, this makes sense. And man, all of a sudden, we got a great church. And we do. And we got a great deal. And we do. Yep. And man, who cares about that? Because I don't. I ain't going to lose it. We ain't going to get defeated over that. Jesus, you want Alright, uh, let's finish up. Uh, let's see, verse 17. Because thou sayest, I'm rich and increased with goods, and that's what Christians are doing now. And have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. And yet they got all this stuff. And they got this uh, mega church thing going on. And it's got everybody got a thousand dollars too. Or two thousand five. And then, oh man, look at that guy's hair. I need hair. The Lord says. No, no, no. No, no, for real. We got this man, and you know, we can do the tithe. We got this little the square thing and we got we don't even have that we're cologne proof and all that. Not at all. You're miserable. You're wretched, rather. You're miserable. See that word, miserable? I, I watch Christians. You? God, you. You say, you don't look safe. They're miserable. Christians. Sins are gone, right? Under the blood. Mm -hmm. In my father's house and main mansions. Woohoo! And you're all depressed, sad. Missing out on life, you're miserable. Why? Something ain't right there. The connection is off. You hooked up with something. You yoked up with something that ain't right. Something that God told you to stay away from. And now it's zapping your energy. You know? It's like getting a magnet with your credit card or whatever. And then again, what happened to all this? Yeah, you got to be you, you were too close to something out there. And Lord try to remind you, man, a couple of devils and all this stuff and not being unequally yoked and all this stuff. And God's saying, I can help you with everything that you're going through. I can. 
the way I want you to go through this particular thing we call L-I-F-E, and you just keep pushing me back. And the Lord says in verse 18, he says, I counsel thee to buy me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mightest be rich, mayest be rich. And then he would say, all right, we're going back to uh, verse 17 right here. It's not here. This is temporary. In the meantime, just be content with such things as you have. In the meantime, man, just just try to find a, uh, uh, you know, the center, the yin and yang, no, man. Uh, that false balance you got to get away from and just get in the center of God's will. And then the Lord God Almighty will balance everything out in your life. And when it comes to the day that you check out, and you will, I don't know what to tell you, man. You say, well, I would God Almighty be over here today, so what? And you know about this little Indian woman that smokes a corn cob pipe over here in, the, in Louisiana, whatever. Well, that's about to change up tonight. But uh, she's uh, lived to be 90 years old, and then see, we can do that, and everything's fine. You're missing it, man. That ain't it. It isn't fine. And it's flesh. And this corruption must put on incorruption. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And there'll be a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Instead of being excited about uh, even so come Lord Jesus, all the Christians are doing is yelling four more years. Dude, stop with that. And if I come to find out that I've got to stay down here longer and that rapture keeps getting delayed because somebody's in office and we've got to stay down here another four more years because God answered your prayer, man, I'm going to have a problem with you, man. I'm going to start throwing, find some rock, roll rocks, throw them right through your window, man. I'm Amen. Find you out. I'm going to come burn it down. Be a uh, black lives man. I ain't got nothing on me. And keep, I'm going to find it, man. I'm going to find it. Now I'm going to get the Don't pray that, man, four more years. Stop that. Your prayer is in your Bible, even so come on Jesus. Amen. And now you, you try to remind somebody that. Now you're, oh, hoo, 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 yeah, boy. And Peter said, not so, Lord. And every time Lord, he says that to the Lord, the Lord says, Go try to help him out. Eat, Peter. Eat. Kill and eat. And, Lord, and Peter's like, no, not so, Lord. We're going to do it your way. I don't understand it, so it can't be right. The Lord rebuke him every time. Christians are like that. You ain't in the Bible. You ain't trusting what he says. You don't trust God to take care of you. Amen. You don't ask for wisdom. You don't ask for contentment. You don't ask for the godliness part, rather. You don't get close to him. So when you get part of that godliness part, then... Man, okay, so you don't have the nicest car in the parking lot. So what? You got one. Amen. And so you don't have the nicest suit, man. And I had to change the button and the button in there. It used to be times like that. All my suit, I got a lot of suits, man. Fit in them. <laughs> yeah, fit in them, man. I'll go I'll run around these little kids. I started losing a little weight. And maybe coming up. Verse 18, I counsel you to buy me gold, try it in the, uh, try it in the fire. That thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness is not appear. Anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see, and as many as I love, is it going to hurt me more than hurt you? I never understood that, but I heard that a lot. <laughs> as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Because what God sees in this church of ours, and he called up John in Revelation chapter 4, and he said, come up hither, man, I'm going to show you things that are going to you know, soon come past, I thought. And he's like, okay. And John's probably, when he gets to us, for sure. But John sees us. He saw Jesus Christ getting sick and away that thing, and he was the one that wrote all this stuff down. And he's writing all this, and he's up there in the third heaven watching this, and, and the Lord says, let me show you Christianity in 2000. And I know John. John sang everything there. He was exiled on the island of Patmos. John, he's a better Christian than you ever be, right? Yeah. And you know, you're like, well, 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 well God will bless you with a brand new whatever. Yeah, like John. Because John was stranded on the island like Gilead. And he was all right because had it not been for the fact, he wouldn't have been able to see what God showed him here. And so you preach like, you know, don't you want to see what God has for you? But as long as you keep, you know, grabbing hold of everything this world has to offer, God don't want it. God's going to burn it all. Yep. And you keep grabbing hold of everything that this devil and the world and the flesh have to offer you, man. And, and, and John, excuse me, John says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, and you just can't get enough of it. And you're scheming, and you're calling, and you're texting, and you're hiding, and you're doing this, and you're shucking, and you're jiving, and God's shutting everything down, man. And I, had, I, I, I 
was channel surfing the other day, and I had seen, I didn't even realize that basketball is back on, and it was a little odd at first, you know? And I saw these guys playing, and I looked at the, I thought, well, I had thought that nobody was in the, in the, in the arenas. And I looked again, and it didn't even sound right, and I heard, you know, but there wasn't nobody there, man. I looked again, and people with big, giant heads. I was like, all right. Uh, uh, Steven Spielberg put that together. Yeah. That was George Lucas, man. That's uh, Lucas Light or whatever. Magic Disney put all them people in there, and ain't nobody there. Right. There's some kind of uh, CGI. You seen? Have you seen that? Oh, man. And a little creepy. I don't know where you're getting those images from. Like, God, I saw the guys with the big heads, man. <laughs> and ain't nobody there. Now nah, everything's being canceled out. All these certain things, and people aren't, they're going right there, but they don't get it. They think it's the Germans. Corona's doing all this. It's the Republicans who's doing all this. And then all the Republicans and Democrats are doing all right. God says, uh, it's me doing all that. And we're, by we Baptists, we're like, yes, sir. You still come with me. And you better start telling many people, man, because they ain't gonna, they can't. They can't handle a germ that doesn't even make you sick. So I found a cure for corona in my school. It's because at lunchtime, everybody takes off their mask. And I thought, oh, I get it. So actually, the way to fight off the corona germ and the virus is bologna sandwiches. Amen. So if you have a bologna sandwich with peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you pull that out, then the germ goes away, and you can pull your mask off. As long as you're eating bologna sandwich. And then to a cup of coffee, I found out. Because I pull mine off, I drink coffee, and it goes away. But as soon as you eat the last bite of that sandwich, because it comes back. So I said, all right, guys, do this, man. Tell your parents, put two of them in that box of you. And that's what? I said, well, the one you eat, but the second one you carry around with you, man, hang around your neck like some garlic or whatever, like a fire <laughs> And you won't need the thing when we can get back into school. And you see some of them like, and a few of them are like, yeah, I'm pulling a mask off right in front of lunch. I know that. And all of a sudden it goes away when your lunch time hits, right? Right. And I, like, and I said, and when I, when I read the word of God, I pull the mask off.
you need to broaden your perspective of what this Bible is trying to tell you. It's very simple stuff. It's easy to connect with God. It's just like sometimes it's so obvious you just miss it. So we're just excited to go to heaven. You ever felt left out of something down here? You ever been, you know, here's a team picking sides, and there you are, last one there, and they're like, okay, you can just pick whatever team you want. And you're like, well, I'm going on there. Nah, you feel a little bad. You know, then you go torch your cat, and then you go set that house on fire. Oh, man, you feel like, wow, they didn't pick me. And boy, whatever that is, have the judgment seat of Christ. And then at least for that's a thousand years. Now, maybe that changes when that's all done, and you go back into God type stuff, which is bizarre. Well, at least for that 1,000 years, man, I guess you'll be up there. What you going to be left behind? Up there. Doing what? I don't know. Sweeping. I don't know what you're doing up there. But, but, but the other ones will be down here. And they're mainly. And they're, they're doing it now. And then they're, they're all sorts of prestige. And, man, now everybody's looking up to them. And everything that you blew down here, you say, no, nah, you, you got your inheritance down here. No, nah, I don't want that. I want you to be the exception in the latest scene of church. I want you to be the church. I want you to be the Christian, man. That, that when all these guys are all working, get caught up in all this ridiculousness and, and, and calling God a liar about that book, over that book and stuff, and making fun of all you can get as Bible believers. You sang that song, what was it? Uh, what, this song, the last song I think you sang. What was the last song you sang? What were the songs you sang tonight? Tonight, you sang. Yeah, there's not that whole but there's two songs. I and decided it, to follow that Jesus. one. I decided to follow Jesus. And then somewhere in that 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 verse says, "Though no one follow or something." So no, so none go with me. So no, none go with me. And Jesus. Yeah. All right. And and that was it. I knew what I was going to preach. And when you sang that, I thought, that's Christianity today. That's the the remnant that you're at. Though none go with you. And again, I'm like praying over here, and I'm asking God, this is a big town. Where are the Bible believers? And he's like, oh, you just saying a lot. I'm like, what? I'm trying to. And then it hit me. You just sang that verse. You know? There ain't nobody here. But a few of you. And then what are you supposed to do? I just keep going on. If nobody follows us, nobody, but we never get bigger than what we're at. Lord bless you, this church. Man. Well, we're good. I mean, uh, uh, sure. Uh, I would like to minister to some more people if that's the case. If not, godliness will contend, man. It's great game. And so, man, go ahead and start thinking twice about the church. Uh, hmm, yeah. Lord says, you. You'd be down zero. I got to go back to deep breaths. Father, bless tonight. We do thank you for it. Thank you so much for your son. Thank you for your Bible. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for eternal life, Lord. Thank you for, for the blessed hope to know that eventually this is all going to go by the wayside, Lord. We're going to be forever with you. And Father, help us be found faithful when that day comes. All the distractions that can go on in this world, I pray you just give us enough wisdom. Uh, that book being uh, sharper than any two-edged sword to be able to cut through all that. Uh, thank you again for Kyle and his family, Lord, not only with the baby, but the home, Lord, that you blessed him with. Pray that the transition uh, from Brother uh, Scott's house and however that's working out from, from point A to point B uh, goes smoothly, Lord. And I pray for this church, and I pray for the individuals, Lord. Please help them, keep them encouraged. Uh, we do pray for that uh, hurricane going on in uh, Louisiana and Texas. And definitely pray you will be done, of course, with that. Maybe hearts get right as a result, souls get saved as a result. So we love and thank you. We plead the blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To follow Jesus.